So my name is uh, Piyush Harsh. Uh, I'm a researcher in ICC Lab. Uh, I work together with Thomas, Andy, and the rest of the team. Uh, and I am here uh, to talk about uh, one of the products um, from our lab. It's called Cyclops. And before I go more into the details of the, um, uh, of the framework itself, I want to build the motivation around it. So we all heard today in the keynote, uh, you know, what is the state of uh, cloud computing today? And even if you look into the, the Gartner uh, hype um, graph, you would see that the cloud computing figures in the trough of disillusionment. And this is the, the graph already from last year. So they, they say that, uh, that cloud computing um, uh, would, would, would hit the plateau in the next two to five years. So, you know, um, especially the infrastructure uh, as a service uh, offering uh, from various operators, it's uh, becoming more and more like a commodity. So, you know, everyone offers the same thing. They, they, they offer network um, storage and compute. Um, their prices are not very different, and they have the similar SLS also. And being a, a small or a medium scale operator, it's also very difficult to compete with the big wigs like Amazon, Google, or Microsoft, simply because you know they have lots of money and a huge amount of manpower. So what can you do to keep with them? Uh, it's, it's not an easy task. I mean, uh, being a, a small or a medium scale operator, you need to be definitely agile if you need to compete with those big uh, uh, teams. What that means is that you need to be uh, able to uh, uh, do uh, technical innovations uh, much faster. But that does not solve the problem because those guys could do the same thing. They have you know, lots of money. The other thing would be that since you know, um, you know, the operators in Switzerland are local to the, um, to the um, uh, customers here, they would understand the, uh, the demands better. So you know you could come up with innovative business models like resellers, distributed networks, um, you know, uh, out of the box uh, pricing schemes. But again, that that only moves you a little bit um, ahead in the game, but not by too much. So in in my view, the the only um, way to differentiate yourself from the the big public cloud players is to offer value-added services on top of just a simple compute network and, and storage. Now, the question here is what, the, what those um, services could be. Uh, some of you would say that you know, I offer my storage over SSDs. Can, is this really a, a value-added service? In my opinion, no. It's just another flavor of, of storage service. What you could do is you could really identify your customers and then look what your customers need and then offer those um, uh, requirements as a value-added service. So just to take an example, let's say um, you're targeting the, the small-scale industries um, and, and startups, which could be true for other um, um, enterprises also. Uh, but this is a slide for, for, for startups. You know, they typically are hopefully very good in the technical domain they are operating. But they need a lot of help uh, in, in other um, uh, areas like uh, OSS, BSS systems, uh, customer uh, relationship management systems, and, and other things. And they need those things for cheap. And one of the, you know, the key tenets of cloud computing is that you could offer services on demand um, in an elastic manner, pay as you go, um, to, to them. So hopefully, uh, if, if those value-added services um, could be offered over cloud as a service, those small-scale industries and startups would jump on it. One such value-added services, in our opinion, could be rating, charging, and billing solution, because that's one of the key activity any business has to do if, uh, in order to make revenue. So just to set the uh, playing field, um, you know, set the, the level uh, for all, I'm going to define what, in, in our opinion, rating, charging, and billing means. Um, there are a lot of um, definitions out there uh, on the internet, but the way we work uh, in, in our lab, in our initiative, when we make this framework is, is we you know, base our work on, the, on these definitions. So rating for us is the process that determines the rate of the resource 
you're offering to the customer. These resources could be anything. These resources could be even um, you know, technical assistance uh, or consultancy. It could be anything. Charging is the process where you convert the, the resources consumed by your customer into a cost that they owe back to you. And uh, billing is the process where you consolidate all of those charges over a set period of time. Um, you take into account what are the, um, the penalties that you uh, may have caused by not satisfying the SLAs, or if there is any promotion going on, or any discounts you need to apply. So when you put all of those things together, then you arrive at a bill at the end of the period. That's billing. How it's done typically, uh, I'm not talking about the big, big companies. Big companies may have solutions from, you know, really expensive solutions from SAP or Ericsson to do billing for them. But uh, typically, and, and I personally have seen cases in Switzerland even, where people have been doing uh, rating charging billing process manually uh, and typically using Excel spreadsheets. That, in our opinion, is not the way to go about it. Um, it should be automated. Uh, it should be adaptive enough that you know if you're um, offering portfolio changes, you don't need to you know hire a whole bunch of developers to recode your rating charging and billing um, scenarios. So, one thing was that you try to understand your customers now. This is time for introspection. If in your company yourself, if you're not doing rating and charging uh, properly, then your uh, money-making uh, uh, pipeline could take a hit if, if the economic environment changes tomorrow or if you have a, a, a different set of offerings uh, for your customers in, let's say, a couple of years. So the, here are a bunch of questions. And if you have answered no to any, any one of these questions, then I urge you to please see us. So what is Cyclops? It started off as being um, a charging platform for OpenStack clouds, but then we realized that this is not a problem just for OpenStack. It's a problem for all uh, cloud platforms in general, um, including um, CloudStack or anything else that you could imagine. So um, we actually built the system from, from scratch, grounds up for cloud services. It has full support today for OpenStack metering. But the support for CloudStack is coming um, very soon. Uh, we also um, aim to uh, provide uh, um, uh, usage report generation for popular uh, PES flavors, including Cloud Foundry and OpenShift. And um, the icing on top is uh, the, the framework is designed in such a manner that any um, application in the, in the user space running on cloud could also be metered and charged with this framework. Uh, it's a microservices architecture. Each component in this framework is uh, feature complete and deployable uh, and usable as an independent component in its own right. Uh, offers RESTful APIs, so if you need to develop uh, any um, other um, functionality on top of it, you could do it. And it's orchestration ready, so it's um, um, it, it supports automated deployment and has heat scripts and templates. So you could, uh, even today, start to offer this framework to your customers as a service on demand. And uh, to make it really usable, um, you know, it, it has RESTful API, so you could um, program against it and, and um, develop your own uh, custom user interfaces, but we all we already provide a powerful dashboard which uh, does uh, quite nifty uh, visualization, not only for uh, for resources consumed, but also for the uh, the rates that were applied for those resources over a period of time, and um, and and the uh, costs uh, uh, for that period. This is what uh, is, is a very small glimpse of it, um, but I'll come back to it a little bit later. Uh, that's the whole architecture um, where we have the core uh, microservices. These are the usage data record microservice, the rating and charging microservice, and billing microservice. But uh, in order to uh, uh, make it um, secure 
and uh, a proper enterprise grade um, system. There are a bunch of support services around it, including authentication and authorization service and a message broker service, which basically allows external applications to feed uh, their meter data into the framework. Uh, and that dashboard is just a, just a, a a good uh, free module we throw at it. You, you could use it, but you could develop your own dashboard because um, below it is uh, RESTful APIs. So this is what the, um, the UDR looks like. Um, it, it basically takes uh, um, a, a periodic schedule uh, where uh, then it goes and fetches the, um, the consumption values uh, for various resources from OpenStack. Uh, and again, it's a pluggable driver-based system, so you could plug in the uh, Cloud Stack driver, and that, that would work also. And um, then what it does is uh, it uh, generates, uh, it, it harmonizes the data, and then it, it generates a usage report, and then stores it into a time series database. Storing it into time series database basically um, allows us to, um, uh, to visualize it uh, nicely, and also, uh, allows us to feed this data into uh, a predictor and uh, derive um, the, the future prediction values for resource consumption based on past historical data. The rating and charging uh, microservice, um, what it uh, does is it, it basically takes the, uh, the usage report that was generated by the UDR microservice, and then it applies the rate. Uh, the rate, it, it fetches from the rate, rate engine, and here, the cool thing is uh, Rate Engine basically allows you to uh, not only uh, apply a, a static uh, rating policy, but also allows you to um, uh, make the system work with dynamic rates. Now, this is something new, which you don't probably, you probably you won't see it in, in, in many systems that does the, the, the same things. What, what we do, uh, what we mean by dynamic rating is, um, you could imagine uh, Amazon, um, uh, spot prices. So uh, your rate could be affected by what the environmental parameters around your data center looks like. For instance, if the data center is, is heavily loaded, you may want to use a different rate for resources. Or if you have a, a differentiated power rate from the power supply companies uh, where they charge you uh, less uh, power, rate for uh, off-peak times, then you can have a different rate. And all of those um, things could be factored in into the rating engine policy uh, system. And um, uh, then, then we are able to fetch the rates and apply to the usage and generate the, the, the uh, charge reports. Then the billing microservice, uh, it fetches the, uh, the uh, charge reports uh, for a particular billing uh, duration from the rating and charging microservice. And then it looks into uh, if there are any SLA violations. And these SLA systems are external, uh, and they could feed in the violations into the, the Cyclops framework uh, using, again, RESTful APIs. And uh, depending on the rules which are associated with these SLA violations, um, uh, penalties could be applied to the total cost a customer owes to the service provider uh, at the end of the billing period. And so it basically converts the charge data records into uh, billable um, line data. And then we have the dashboard, which provides the uh, unified experience for uh, not only the customers of the system, but also the system administrators. Um, it basically leverages the, the APIs of the underlying microservices. And it also maintains uh, a, a bill cache, essentially. So all the bills that have been generated uh, by the admins, um, uh, they are stored uh, in a database uh, in this module. So uh, just to um, enforce the point that the, the dashboard basically reuses the, the APIs of the microservices, uh, that's what I'm going to show here. So um, the login. Uh, mechanism uses the authentication and authorization service. Uh, the usage uh, reports basically uh, makes call to the UDR microservice. The rate uh, visualization gets the data from the rating and charging microservice. And the, the, the charge visualization, like what the customer has owed to the provider over a period of time, uh, that is taken again from the rating and charging uh, microservice. Uh, 
the, the bills are uh, stored locally, but the action from an admin to generate a bill basically calls the billing microservice. Um, so having microservices um, allows us to offer uh, two possibilities. One is that you could see the potential of uh, a particular microservice in itself and just use it standalone, or you could um, use the whole framework uh, together. Uh, but in order to be um, realistic, uh, especially since the framework is uh, you know, dealing with um, uh, monetary data, um, revenue sources for the company, it needs to be uh, properly secured. So uh, Cyclops Security, um, what it does, it, it offers um, uh, both authentication and authorization. And it also supports uh, OAuth to authorization protocol and um, supports OpenID Connect. Um, right now, we are using um, a product called OpenAM. It's also open source. And using that allows us to uh, enable two-factor uh, authentication um, for end users. Our um, dashboard module is a split design uh, by choice. Uh, we wanted to keep all the um, API interactions with the microservices in the internal network and not exposed to the public network. Uh, so we have a, a very limited number of interfaces which are, which are exposed, exposed on the public network. Um, so a uh, smaller set of problem points to take care of from a security point of view. So these, you know, the, the things that I have talked right now um, is, is already available today. Um, it's, it's available for you to, to play around with, uh, download, um, see, evaluate if your company's um, use case uh, fits uh, the, the framework or not. If it does not fit, I, I mean, we believe that, uh, that the framework supports all use cases. If you disagree, then I would urge you to come and speak to me and or one of my team members uh, who have a booth here outside. So, so what we want to do next? Um, what we want to do is we want to improve the, the caching algorithm uh, on the dashboard uh, module, where it should be able to uh, instantaneously display the results of uh, uh, frequently requested, uh, um, uh, you know, data uh, requests from the end user, and we want to ensure that the uh, the CDRs and the UDRs that we store in the system is auditable. So we are investigating the write once, read many, storage philosophy, um, and then. Um, as a value-added uh, service on top of the dashboard, we are uh, going to implement next the service portfolio management component that would allow you to basically mix and match various resources uh, of, of your cloud um, stack and attach uh, custom rating rules to, to those bundles and, and create a product out of it. So um, these, this framework, um, you know, uh, it started out from a bunch of high-level requirements from a couple of European projects that, that we are working in. One such uh, project is mobile cloud networking, where uh, essentially uh, the, the, the project aims to uh, offer as a service the individual virtualized components of a telecom um, software stack. And those are deployed over OpenStack Cloud. So there is a need for a unified billing where uh, the service provider is able to not only build the use of cloud resources, but also the, the application uh, metrics, uh, whatever they may be. And uh, so Cyclops um, is, is basically used there. And um, the UDR microservice uh, basically allows the, uh, the telco applications which are running on cloud to send in the, the application metrics and define the rules for those metrics uh, to generate the bill. And the other project uh, from where we get our inspiration um, is from another uh, European project called Tinova, which is essentially coming up with a, a marketplace for a network functions developer um, to be deployed over uh, a telco cloud that you know 
I don't want to get into what a telco cloud is. <laughs> So there, uh, what the the project requirement was that uh, that the uh, RCB framework should be able to support a multi-actor uh, environment uh, here, being the service operator and also the network function um, developer, and should be able to generate bills not only to the end users but uh, should be able to generate the revenue sharing credit node between the service provider and the network function developer. And here, uh, another thing. Uh, which uh, was that they wanted the, the network functions uh, billing not to be usage-based, but event-based. Uh, what, what I mean by that is uh, you know, uh, when a, a function is started and stopped, uh, they wanted to do the bill based on the time that was, uh, that was used. So we expect um, that all of these features would be uh, baked into the uh, open source uh, offering that we have from our lab by mid-July. So I have a, a small two minutes demo uh, to, to, to show how the whole thing uh, looks like from a dashboard point of view. And some of you may have already seen it uh, outside during the coffee break. Uh, but those who have yet not got a chance to, to talk to us uh, and are interested in what we offer, uh, through Cyclops, then please stop by. Um, uh, essentially here, is it running? Well, so you have to stop outside in the booth and then see the demo <laughs> yourself. Um, so the software is available today. Uh, we had a... Uh, uh, a full packaged release, in fact, yesterday. Uh, the code base is on GitHub. Uh, that's the project um, landing page uh, where you should be able to find all of these links. Uh, it, it comes with uh, Apache 2.0 license, which is very uh, much industry-friendly uh, licensing model. Uh, and uh, if you want more details on what we do as part of the initiative uh, and what are the next things in our roadmap, please feel uh, free to visit this page here. So um, if you have questions, uh, ask uh, Srikant here. Um, ask me, send me an email. And if you have any questions, I will be more than happy to take them, either here or during the break. Um, Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, would you prefer the questions when you are outside? Um, it's up to you. Uh, I, think, I think we are on time here, so um, if I could take maybe one or two if there is. Yes, it would be. Nice. Otherwise, you can. Ah, sorry. I was actually wondering. Um, the whole idea looks very, very interesting, very promising, but isn't it actually too complex already to integrate for people? Um, no, not really. Um, in fact, I integration in the sense that uh, you, you need it to be able to, to take in the custom metrics from whatever system you want it to build for. And we have RESTful API, so it's, it's very uh, low, uh, low time effort for dev developers to do that. And we actually have, uh, uh, the, the whole framework is orchestration ready. So even setting it up is not a problem. You just basically send a, a click a button and the whole framework is deployed for you. Now, when you deploy the framework, you actually get back the, the rest endpoints where your um, uh, enterprise specific software uh, needs to be maybe a little bit recorded to send the data into the system. But uh, if, if you think that's a little bit complicated then you could come to us and we could help you there. Thank you very much. There yes, please. Yeah, yes, thank you for the for the talk. Um, are you still the only contributor on the project? And what? Are you still the only contributors on this project? No, no. Um, Benny, can you stand up? No, but I, oh. ICC Lab. Uh, uh, um, uh. No, um, actually, we have um, a bunch of guys uh, in Asia. Um, they're contributing a little bit. They're actually developing the uh, uh, the driver for OpenShift and Cloud Foundry. Okay, interesting. I, have you thought of pushing it to 
any foundation, whether it's Apache, we you chose the license, or or, or any um, that's bigger that's open source framework to, yes, to, to that, get it? That's that would be the the next goal for us. I mean, we were right now very busy with the, uh, the with the development effort trying to get the release out, but now we have the framework out and it's it's up and running. And and we already have a couple of uh, Swiss companies that are very interested in it and they are using it uh, or trying to try to deploy them into the environment. Maybe the next step for us would be to to look for a, a proper foundation to 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 attach it to. Thanks. Thank you very much.